What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team that you may be using in career mode this year. But before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and I can't stress that enough and the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously you don't have to follow all the tips this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you can sign for a certain club this is mainly aimed at those who are out there who are new to the game and just need a little bit of advice or for those who are out there who just want a few recommendations of what players to sign for a team that you may be using in this year's career mode so yes in today's episode of who to sign for guys it's Leeds United and I'm really excited for this one because Leeds have been a fascinating team to keep your eyes on over the course of the past few years now when Marco Bielsa came in he took them from a championship side who struggled to get over that final hurdle of of returning to the Premier League, did that, then in their first season last year, finished in the top 10. It was an amazing first season. They won so many plaudits for their brand of all-out attack, fast-paced, exciting, fun football to watch. But this season, they've had what you might call second season syndrome in the top flight. Yep, Bielsa has just been replaced. Uh, they've brought in Jesse Marsh, the uh, American head coach as well. But Leeds are such a fun team to do a career mode with this year. And if you are looking for an RTG in the Premier League, I think Leeds are probably my top choice. They've got fantastic kits. They've got a very atmospheric ground in Ellen Road. They've got strong rivalries, especially with Manchester United, of course. And also, if my team ever got to the Premier League in your save, Millwall as well. But uh, it's, it's a great team to do a career mode with, absolutely. And as I'm running you through the squad here, it's a four-star team. The objectives in the first season, very, very, I would say safe, if you will, finishing mid-table in the Premier League and reached the last 16 of the FA Cup. And as I run you through the squad here, you'll notice there's some really good young talent as well. It's a side with some good young talent and also some aging players as well. It's a nice blend of youngsters and also experience as well and a couple of star players and of course Rafinha and your main man Calvin Phillips as well. So uh, yeah, so I run you through the side here. Uh, you can see there are uh, three players, no sorry, one player we see that come to the end here. That's Adam for sure, uh, the 20 year old central midfielder and I'll put him plus click and also Liam Cooper on the transfer list as well. It's just three players going on the transfer list with Leeds United. You don't need to do a hard rebuild in the first season. Just sell a few of the aging players and bring in some youngsters as well. So we sold Klitsch uh, to Mallorca for 2.15 mil. Uh, he is now in his early 30s so I'll definitely say in the first season uh, just 73 rated the fact of the matter is he's, he's not going to get much game time in this team and has no long-term future as well. So whatever you can get for Klitsch, I'd just take the money and run. We got around, I think it was 2.2 million uh, from, yeah, Monaco uh, for the Polish midfielder. Definitely recommend getting whatever you can and just taking the cash. And also as well, Liam Cooper, um, obviously been at the club since 2004. 14, I think he's been here for a very long time regardless, overseen major change whilst he's been at Ellen Road. I believe for a while he was captain as well, but I would recommend selling him. Um, 75 rated, 29 years old. You will be looking for a new centre half in the first season and personally, He's only going to get worse. He actually turns 30 uh, right before the season starts. He's only going to get worse. He won't get any better than 75 overall. You can you can do better and you can you can get younger as well. So for me. Uh, it's, it's, I, I, I'd recommend selling Cooper in the first season. It's, it's kind of painful after all the years he spent there in Adam Rowe, but I would recommend selling him in the first year, along with, again, Adam Forshaw, as we extended a bit here from Montpellier, and also Osasuna as well, uh, Cooper and Klitsch. Those three players I'd recommend selling in the first season. I, personally, I wouldn't recommend selling anyone else, though. You know, you could possibly move on Stuart Dallas, if you will. Uh, if you really wanted to be harsh, perhaps Luke Ayling at right back as well. But really, you don't need to do a major, 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 major rebuild in the first season. If you just sell those free aging players who don't have as much quality, you're not going to get much money for them. But the one thing you'll be noticing as I'm uh, negotiating the sales here is they're actually on very high contracts. Liam Cooper is on about 50 grand a week and at 29 years old and 75 rated, doesn't really justify that salary. Not in FIFA career mode, at least. Same with Klitsch. He was on over 30 grand a week, despite being just 73 overall. They don't really justify those salaries. So really, the money you're getting for these players, whilst 
cost, it might be quite minimal, um, is is secondary to the fact you'll be saving money by not paying their contracts anymore. So I definitely would recommend doing that. Selling those players who are on high contracts, they don't justify them, and looking to get younger replacements. So as for new signings with Leeds United, on the back of the free sales there, jumping our budget up to around 57 million. Well, the first player I get is a new backup goalkeeper. Uh, it's Etienne Green from St. Etienne. I recommend this guy for practically any Premier League career mode. He's a young English goalkeeper playing for St. Etienne, clues in the name, and uh, you can get him for around 10 to 11 million pounds. He's 74 rated with 82 potential, and whilst you have got Meslier uh, between the sticks, the fantastic young shot stopper, you want someone better for the backup goalkeeper role. Kiko Kassir is out on loan. You could potentially recall him if you want, but the other two goalkeepers here are Clayson and also uh, Vanden... Oh, Vanden something. Um, young Dutch goalkeeper, Vanden Huevel. There we go. Um, you know, th these these guys are, are decent young talents, if you will. But I personally think you should get someone better for the bench. You, you might not need one for Meslier, but heaven forbid if Meslier ever gets an injury, you're screwed between the sticks. So personally, I recommend signing Etienne Green as your understudy for Meslier. But as for other signings, I would recommend a new holding mid. Obviously, we sold Klitsch and for sure as well. Stuart Dallas is aging as well. I would recommend a new holding mid to play alongside Calvin Phillips. My number one target would be this guy, Oliver Skip of Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, 20 years old, 77 Rated. You can get him for valuation because he plays for a big club and there are better players in terms of rating in his position. But this guy is a really, really good young talent. He's got 84 potential, so grows seven ratings. And at 77 rated here, you see defensively, he's really, really solid. Medium high work rates, comfortable on the ball with 78 short pass and 76 long pass as well. The stamina is not bad at 78 either. He, he, he isn't the quickest of players, that's true. You might want to train the pace up a little bit, but other than that, he's He's a very comfortable uh, and commanding his team to play alongside Calvin Phillips. So I definitely recommend Oliver, Oliver Skip as your replacements for Forshaw and Klitsch as well. And I would recommend a new fullback as well. And I'm going for this guy, Kyle Walker-Peters. Uh, formerly of Spurs, of course, moving on to Southampton. Uh, this is a really good, versatile fullback. You might have to spend a couple mil over the valuation to get him from St. Mary's. But 77 rated, 24 years old. So he's still going to get better. His potential is 82. Too, so he grows five ratings and what I love about KWP is he can play both right back and left back very very versatile with a four star weak foot high medium work rates great stamina and just as good going forward as he is defensively as well so he can offer options both when going forward on overlaps and also be solid at the back as well I give him the defensive wide back development plan though to train up the defensive work rate from medium to high and I put him in the first team and drop Luke Ayling to the bench obviously Junior Furpo has just come in at left back 76 rated so he'll be starting at left by the KWP replacing Ailing. I think to me makes a lot of sense the third signing I made was this guy right here another Spurs youngster it is Jaffet Tanganga uh, again because there are players uh, that are higher rated in the same position you can get him for valuation which is 8 million pounds and this guy is 74 rated 22 years old and you might look at his position and think hang on a minute you just signed a wing back in Kyle Walker Peters why are you getting another one when Luke Ailing is still here well with Tanganga I've mentioned this before this guy is so versatile you can play across all the back line right back left back but also center back as well and that to me is where I would play Tanganga with medium high work rates 81 strength and I think it's 89 jumping as well don't be put off by the fact this guy is only 5 for 11 and I say only 5 for 11 like I'm a girl on tinder personally speaking this guy can definitely play center back and to me that's where I think you get the best out of him again he's not the traditionally tallest of center halves at six foot plus but because of the 89 jump in the solid strength as well it's not going to be too much of a shortcoming no pun intended I really feel as though Tanganga would do a much better job at centre half so to me I'd sign him from Spurs for again around valuation of 8 million and then I'd train him to centre back straight away to replace Liam Cooper uh, long term. Uh, as for one of the final signings I made, uh, I would recommend a new backup striker. Now I know Leeds fans will be sitting there saying what's wrong with Gohart? Obviously scored that late winner uh, very recently for Jesse Marsh's first Premier League victory. Nothing wrong with Gohart at all. Great potential really good young striker to look out for in the future but you might want someone a little bit higher rated for the bench right now. 
and I really do recommend this guy, Giacomo Raspadori. His contract is not coming to the end of the year, which means you can get him for under the valuation plus a minor sell-on clause as well. He's one of the best young strikers to buy in the game from Sassuolo. 85 potential and a great bench option to have for Patrick Bamford and possibly, when probably to be fair, will become your starting striker after a year or two. And my final signing was this guy in the end. I just about had the money to pull this off, but I had to swap a player in as part of the deal as well. Um, you'll know all about this guy if you watch Championship Football. You'll know all about this guy if you play FIFA Career Mode or Football Manager. It is the Fulham playmaker Fabio Carvalho. Such a tremendous young talent. And Lord knows we're all hoping he chooses England, not Portugal, <laughs> to represent his country uh, at a senior international level. Uh, but Fabio Carvalho also has his deal at come at the end of the year. So you should be able to get him for around three to three and a half mil. I didn't have the money to, to pay for that all myself. So in the end, I had to do a little swap deal, which included, I don't know what I'm doing here, which included Tyler Roberts as well. Uh, 71 rated. So he's a rating lower than Roberts, who I just gave to Fulham, but he's got far higher potential. Fabio's potential is 86. This guy turns into an amazing playmaker in world football when he's at his full peak. Great base stats to begin with at just 18 years old and definitely, definitely, definitely worth picking up as your long-term successor for Rodrigo in the playmaker role. So in the end with Leeds, we only sold the three players for just over 10 mil, but again, they were players we could afford to part ways with Forshaw and Klitsch and also Lee and Cooper as well. Players in their 30s or in their late 20s. And as for the signings as well, six players coming in for 63.8 mil. So it was a big net loss of over 50 million in the end. But when you look at the players that were coming in here with Leeds United, you got Oliver Skip and Kyle Walker-Peters going straight in the first 11. Then for the bench, you got Raspadori with 85 potential, uh, Tanganga with 82, and also Etienne Green with 82, and the youngster Fabio Carvalho as well. So uh, for the first season, uh, as per usual, we'd simulate the end of the campaign to see how Leeds would get on. Once again, a reminder, the objectives for Jesse Marsh's first year in charge were to finish in mid-table and reach the last 16 of the FA Cup. And as you can see... As we came towards the end of the first season, i got to be honest, I was really, really worried. I was watching a simulation go through and we lost a lot of games. But I survived my first year in charge to find out we finished in 17th. Yep, it was not quite the first season I was hoping for, but we did do the most important thing, which was survive. Just. Now, Liverpool were champions, Man City in second, Chelsea and the Red Devils going into the Champions League as well. But on the other end with Leeds in the first season, asked to finish in mid-table. Well, I guess it's all about perspective because in the end, we were six points clear of Brighton and 18. So we, we were reasonably comfortably safe in terms of points. But the position was concerning. Again, it depends how you look at it, really. We were only seven points off Brentford in 13th place. So it's not like we were like well away from a mid-table finish. But it is worth pointing out, 17th place is, whether you look at the points or not, it's still scraping it by a single position. So we survived, we stayed up in the Premier League, but it was far from a comfortable mid-table finish in the first season. Um, in the League Cup, as you can see, we were knocked out in the very first round. Doesn't count towards the objectives, but I thought I'd show you. Anyway, as Chelsea were crowned champions, beating the championship side Bournemouth. And as for the FA Cup as well, well we did hit this objective. Uh, reached the last 16, we're knocked out by Everton as Spurs won the FA Cup in an all-London final there at Wembley. So, yeah, we hit our FA Cup objective, but we did fall short in the Premier League. But to be honest here... As I run you through the team with Leeds United after our first season, Etienne Green going free ratings to 77 overall. Such a great goalkeeper to buy in this year's FIFA career mode if you're doing a, uh, a Premier League side. To be honest here, as long as you survive in the first season, I just take it and run with it, really. You know, as we know, Leeds this season have been very, very uh, shaky. They have conceded a lot of goals, as you would expect under a Marco Bielsa side. Now, of course, replaced by Jesse Marsh, of course. So I changed Tanganga's position here. Look at this jump, by the way, from 75 to 80 overall guys if you're looking for a young cheap English center half don't look for a center half look at Tanganga and then change his position man he grows so nicely once the position change is complete due to the fact he is more of a center half than a wing back according to the game stats um, but in the first season with Leeds like I said just making sure you secure survival is the, the real main thing on your agenda it's it's not a bad team a four-star team but of course it's nowhere near good enough to be a European standard team in season one so the first season really is just all about laying down the groundwork you know bringing in those young talents looking to assemble the core and we 
we did that. You know, all of our signings, five out of the six were English, Raspadori exception, the young Italian. But of course, with 85 potential on Giacomo, Carvalho with 86, Skip with 84, and then Tanganga, KWP, and Etienne Green all have 82 potential as well. You've got a nice little core you're building here with Leeds for the years to come. And again, at Ellen Road here, you're not looking to win the Premier League in season one. You're not even looking to break up the top six in season one. At the end of the day, all you need to do is secure mid-table football, uh, Premier League football, sorry, and a mid-table finish what the board are asking for. If you can do that, it's a solid first season. This is a long-term RTG at Ellen Road, but I couldn't recommend them higher for an RTG in the Premier League. They're such a fun team to use. They've got a great loyal fan base, a really, really strong rivalry, a couple of good young talents here already, and I would definitely say if you're looking for your next Premier League RTG, Leeds United, guys, give them a go. Really, really fun team to do a career mode with this year in the Premier League. But that will end today's episode of Peter Time for guys. Big thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, if you had please drop a like. Most of you all have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode of Who to Sign For very soon.